Many thanks for choosing us. We we'll begin with the leader of 31st December Revolution, Jerry John Rawlings, who has mounted the strongest defense yet for an era some Ghanaians have in recent times criticized for various human rights abuses. He maintains the coup that asked Dr. Hila Liman from office was a response to a loud call for justice in a corrupt Ghana. A situation Mr. Rawlings admits still persists. The former president on Tuesday joined national officers and flag bearer of the NDC to mark 38 years since Ghana's last coup d'etat. Issues ranging from an ending internal politics at the University of Education Winneba, the Bank of Ghana's decision to print new notes, and EC's position on a new voters' register came top in various speeches. Joining us is Joseph Akable, was at the Winneba Lorry Park where the event was held, and now reports. Has a long way to go, but I've come to stay. The commemoration event was on the theme monetization of elections in Ghana, a threat to national development and genuine democracy. The event has over the years been used by various speakers to remind the NDC and Ghanaians at large of the need to stick to the principles of probity and accountability. A member of the PNDC set up to run the country following the coup, Brigadier General Nunu Mensah retired, however took on the NDC and the MPP for failure to deal decisively with graduate unemployment. Our two main political parties, the NDC and the MPP, have not got a clue to me, a clue. As to how to deal with this problem and the situation worsens by the day. The Bank of Ghana recently printed new currency notes. The NDC's flag bearer John Dramani Mahama has some concerns. We say that you cannot clear more than 5,000 cities off the counter because we want people to use less cash in transactions. And then at the same time, you go and print 100 Ghana CD notes and 200 Ghana CD notes. You cannot understand what reason in hell would make any government thinking logically do something like that. You want to make it easier for people to carry huge sums of cash when we say we are building a cashless society. And the worst thing is, I was reading in the news uh, two days ago, and they say Ghana has declared support to join ECHO next year in 2020. So if we're going to join the ECHO and adopt the new West African money system, then what is the need to print 100 Ghana notes and 200 Ghana notes on the eve when you are going to join the ECHO? Is it because somebody just wants to print the note so that he gets his kickback or his uh, 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 whatever? agent's fee or something, because otherwise it doesn't make any logical sense. He then took on the government for what he says is wasting 62 million cities on foreign travels. When you spend 62 million Ghana cities in nine months on foreign travel, foreign travel alone, 62 million Ghana cities, and you come from wherever you travel, then you come back, and you go back to the people on the ground, and you say, vote for me, what will they tell you? The 62 million you chopped, give me some before I vote for you. That is fuel monetization. The EC's decision to print a new register suffered the same fate. When you have a voter's register that is only seven years old, and you have a database valuably collected, that costs you money to build. And then you say, I'm going to throw that database away and build a new database based on a new biometric register at 444 million Ghana cities. When you could have upgraded the old system at a little over 200 million Ghana cities. That is the kind of waste our people are angry with. On the fight against corruption, Mr. Mahama criticized government's approach as he revealed the next NDC government will amend the assets declaration law. Our assets declaration regime 
so that people going into public office will declare their assets and if possible, amend the Constitution so that those assets can be published. The revolution and what it achieved has become a subject of national discourse since the joint news documentary, Scars of the Revolution. Mr. Rawlings believes efforts are being made by various individuals to erode the gains of the revolution. And many of today forgotten the circumstances that gave birth to June 4th, 1979, and 31st December, 1981. And some have deliberately spent huge resources sponsoring a distortion of history based on outright lies or half-truths, and the rendition by cowards who ran away during those heady days. On the state of affairs at the University of Education, Winneba, Mr. Rawlings wants current Vice Chancellor Professor Afoboni to step aside as investigations continue. There are ongoing that there are ongoing investigations regarding the current Vice Chancellor. It will be appropriate for the Council to request that he steps aside for fairness to prevail, as has been the practice with other similar circumstances in the past. The commemoration event marks the end of series of events undertaken by the NDC in the year 2019. <laughs> Nearly 60,000 new jobs have been created for Ghanaians in the private sector by the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. That is the latest revelation coming from the Outfit CEO, John Kuma. The NEIP is a flagship policy initiative of the NPP government with a primary objective of providing integrated national support for startups and small businesses, primarily focusing on business development, services and funding for young businesses to enable them grow and become successful. John Kuma revealed that almost every beneficiary had created about three jobs to battle unemployment in the country. He was speaking to Joy News' Roland Walker on the AM show. Part of the conditions for the support, they are required to create a minimum of three jobs. Okay. So on the average, we've done over 54,000. Some of them, 54,000 jobs created if, in if the... If you cascade If you it. cascade it. Okay. I mean, if you multiply the 19,000 by three, you do like about 50. That's the minimum. Some of them are able to do even 50 or 40. Some do 20. There was a young man we supported who is into industrial cleaning with just 10,000. He employed 15 workers. So another a young lady who is into coffee production process and processing, she had nine workers. Now she has 54 workers. So when you use the three as the average across board, you, you are not far from one. So we believe that uh, in the past two years alone, we have created nearly 60,000 jobs in the private sector and more in counting. The National Teaching Council has dismissed assertions that a 220 city charge for the administration of the licensure exams is exorbitant. There's been concerns over the exams in general, with NDC flag bearer John Mahama vowing to scrap it altogether if really elected as president in a Facebook Live address. The licensure, if people will understand, it's about how you enter into a profession. I believe that if we improve the examination, the final exam that they take, and we improve the quality of teaching and learning in the colleges of education, you don't need for them to pass their exams, come out, and go back and write a licensing exam. And so when we come into office, we'll take out the licensing exam, we'll improve the quality of teaching and learning in the colleges of education, so that when they pass their exam for the colleges, you know that this is a person who is a professional teacher and can handle the children that they'll be given. Chairman of the National Teaching Council, Professor Eric Nyako Samson, has meanwhile been justifying the charge. He tells Komladum in an exclusive interview the council is currently collating data from qualified teachers across the country for the issuance of biometric licenses to them. 
the licensure, if people will understand, it's about how you enter into a profession. And so to speak, licensure is the first step of professionalization. So it's first only for those who are entering the profession. So if you say that you want to scrap it, then how are you going to professionalize it? You know, um, I will want us to see how did the NTC even come about, the National Teaching Council. Um, and um, from the Anamua Mensa Committee report, which the president said, President Kufour said to review education. And on teacher education, the committee indicated that there should be a body to regulate and then license teachers. So NTC and, and the committee really suggested the name that there should be a national teaching council who should be a coordinating and a licensing body. So in professionalizing teaching, then what do you do? There is the need for licensing, you know, for, so that those who will enter will know that, well, this is the gate we are entering. And if you compare it with all the professions, I think it, it shows. And so to say, to scrap it, um, it's a, it's a little bit worrying, except that to say that um, what needs to be done is to look at it, maybe half stakeholder, and which we have been doing. It can't be that teaching would be the last resort. It can't be that teaching would be so much open to everybody. And so there should be the specialization, and there's a reason. And there's also the issue about the fees that are being charged for the exam itself. You know, there are some calling for either it to be made free of charge, others are saying that perhaps the fees must be reduced so that across board the teachers can be able to afford. Is this something that's on the table? We are still discussing. But you see, um, I heard someone quoted 300 cities, which is wrong, it's false. The teachers pay 220 Ghana cities as the entrance fee. You are writing three papers, and you are looking at writing these three papers right across the country. You are looking at what goes into setting uh, an exam as that. You know, the security, the writers, the moderators, uh, those who will go out to supervise and all that. You have people who, who will take the calculator and say, okay, you say 220 per student. And if you have 14,000 students coming out of the institutions, 20, 220 times 14,000 is so much. What, what are they doing with the money? You know, so that, 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 that makes it interesting. Currently, we just finished a nationwide uh, sensitization of such teachers, uh, of what they will be required to do what details they will need to send to NTC, and then what NTC will do. We are going to take their biometric data. We have some already. Uh, some are not complete, so we'll request them to complete them, and bring them, and then we will come to their centers in the districts in the country to take their data, to take their pictures and all that, and then run biometric what do you call it, license cards for them.